This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, a lot of weather to talk about. Officials closed a road in Etna after a tree fell onto some power lines this afternoon. A section of Plymouth Road was closed down after residents reported the downed wires around 1 o'clock. A resident told us they saw smoke coming from the wires, which were supporting the fallen tree. CMP arrived to shut down the power line so the fire department could safely remove the tree. Captain Jim Green of the Aetna Fire Department encouraged people to stay away from any low-hanging wires. They do pose a hazard. Any vehicles going through might catch them. Uh, no line is ever safe to touch. And please don't go under any lines. If you see low-hanging lines, do not try to drive under them. Do not try to walk under them. Captain Green also told reporters that other towns have been having similar issues due to the inclement weather. The storm is causing power outages around the state as well. Versant Power reporting a total of 31 power outages at this time, leaving more than 700 people affected in our area. Central Maine Power also reports Southern Maine as a whole has been hit with widespread power outages, leaving more than 54,000 people in that part of the state without power. And uh, we've been informed there's also a flood risk warning overnight in the area of the Kanduska Extreme Plaza in downtown Bangor. Public Works is restricting overnight parking in that area out of an abundance of caution. And now as we look outside uh, to get a closer look at what's coming our way, we'll take a first look at our forecast. Thank you so much. It's Friday. Happy Friday to you all. Our first weather today is brought to you by Goose River Farm Meat Store. All right, so not so nice outside today. Lots of rain showers outside. Pretty heavy at that, indicated in the yellow. All of these yellows right over here, those are some heavier batches of rain, and that's going to continue throughout the day today as their muggy meter is showing it being a little bit on the sticky side today. But look what happens by Saturday. Finally starts to drop. So right in time for the weekend, dew points will be low. It will feel comfortable outside. Now look at these high temperatures. We had some lows actually today. It looks like our high temperatures, but these were our actual low temperatures this morning. 60 degrees in Bangor, 62 in Bar Harbor. Wow, that is unbelievable. Temperatures in the morning were higher than our average high temperature. And then later on, of course, we warmed up. 66 in Bangor, same thing by Bar Harbor. Even up to the north, everybody was in on those really nice and comfortable 60s. Tonight, though, temperatures will be on the mild end as some rain showers continue to stick around. All right, so seeing those showers continue overnight. Thanks so much, Conrad. Checking in with you again later. In the meantime, though, state police now confirm what we reported last Friday, the identity of the homicide victim in Lemoyne has been identified as 71-year-old Neil Salisbury. His body was found in a home on the Shore Road on October 3rd. The cause of his death is not being released at this time. Maine Department of Public Safety spokesperson Shannon Moss says the state police major crimes unit continues to investigate the circumstances surrounding Salisbury's death. They ask anyone who lives near the area of Shore Road and feels they have pertinent information to reach out to state police you can call them at 973-3700. Detectives say they do not believe there is any ongoing threat to the public. A Mexico man is expected to survive after being shot by a police officer. Mexico Police Chief Roy Hodson says officers from Rumford and Mexico responded to reports of a domestic violence disturbance at 87 Roxbury Road in Mexico just before 11 last night. When officers arrived, they were allegedly confronted by an armed man. Hodson says a Mexico officer shot 22-year-old Daniel Tibbetts of Mexico. Tibbetts was taken to Rumford Hospital by ambulance. The officer involved in the shooting has been placed on administrative leave pending an investigation by the Attorney General's office. That is standard procedure for any officer involved shooting in the state. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice recently announced a $139 million grant which will support recruitment efforts for law enforcement agencies. Funding will come from the Department's Office of Community Orientation Policing Services COPS Hiring Program. The award will support 180 law enforcement agencies across the country, including the Penobscot County Sheriff's Department and a $125,000 grant going to the Caribou Police Department. 
Local law enforcement agencies are still collaborating with officers to determine the best way to leverage funds to encourage potential candidates to apply. Governor Mills hit the road to show her support for local businesses. Devin Dagnalt has that story. Governor Janet Mills was in Belfast and Bucksport visiting businesses that have prospered by different programs during her administration. In Belfast, the governor visited Front Street Shipyard, a premier international boat building and servicing facility. The governor toured the facility and was shown a demonstration of Shipyard's 3D water jet cutting machine, which according to the governor was purchased with the help of a grant from the main DOT. Well, we, we bought the machine initially as uh, part of our what we hope to do is build carbon fiber ferries. But in the meantime, we have this machine that is a five-axis machine. It operates at 90,000 PSI, for cutting most any material except for tempered glass and diamond. In Bucksport, the governor made stops at the Greenhead Lobster Packaging Plant and the Pemiquid Muscle Farm, both of which benefited from the governor's seafood dealer and processing program. These funds from the program were invested in new technology to help streamline their packaging and shipping. One of the things that we did was we added an inspection belt to our, our bagging line here, um, which will make it more efficient. And then also we purchased some machinery where we can separate the meats from the shells. So we're really excited about that because it, it'll double the employment hours and it will also double the value that we get out of our mussels that we farm. According to John Steves, the plant manager of Greenhead Lobster Packaging, the plant plans on using the funds to make upgrades and become one of the leaders of lobster packaging. Uh, we're building a, a state-of-the-art system here, so we're the template for uh, the new lobster industry. In Belfast and Bucksport, I'm Devin Dagnall, reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. Maine animal health officials are encouraging bird owners to continue protecting their flocks from avian flu. Maine Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry spokesperson Jim Britt says vigilance is still needed as wild birds are migrating. The highly contagious avian influenza can be spread in various ways from flock to flock, including from wild birds, contact with, with infected poultry, equipment and the clothing and shoes of caretakers. Although the department has not detected any cases in domestic birds since June, the virus is still being detected in wild birds. Britt says the wild bird detections coupled with migration means it's necessary to continue preventative measures. Colby College gave two Ukrainian photojournalists the Lovejoy Award for Courage in Journalism. They're the first pho photographers to be given that award. Mstislav Sharnov and Evgeny Mal Maloletka received the award earlier today. They covered the war for the Associated Press in a documentary titled 20 Days in Mariupol, the team that documented the city's agony. The Elijah Parrish Lovejoy Award was established in 1952 and is given to journalists who display fearlessness and commitment to the freedom of press. Chernov and Meloletka were selected by an eight-member committee to receive the award after they risked their lives in order to cover the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Some powerful images there. Meanwhile, UMaine hosted its ninth annual March Against Domestic Violence today. A.J. Douglas spoke to organizers and students who decided to march for a critical cause, rain or shine. It's a huge problem, but it's hidden. It happens behind closed doors. So nobody knows. Dozens of students from the University of Maine and Orono decided to continue the annual march against domestic violence. Despite Friday's rain, student and faculty organizers from the Maine Business School spoke about why student engagement surrounding this issue prepares victims to seek help. In all of our communities, it's important, but especially in our campus community, um, most people um, will experience some form of domestic violence. If people learn about this and then they can kind of spot the signs like, oh, sh you know, my friend, there's something wrong. Dr. Nori Jones is a professor for the School of Business at the University of Maine. She mentioned the several partnerships that help to bring the community event to campus. We work collaboratively with um, the Army ROTC on campus, the Athletic Department, we are the MBS Corps, we work, work with Student Life, with Title IX, with Partners for Peace, and many more groups just to increase awareness. Organizers say events like this give students the opportunity to form bonds and show solidarity to stamp out domestic violence 
on college campuses nationwide. For me, it's been a great way to connect with other people and to help with our mission, which is growing and strengthening our local community and our humane campus communities. Anyone experiencing abuse or violence can reach out to Partners for Peace by dialing 1-800-863-9909. In Orono, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. Great to see the commitment from all those students just sticking it out in the rain out there. Well, still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, Beale University introduces new academic opportunities for those who want to study cannabis. And a brand new business celebrates in gra its, its grand opening in downtown Bangor. We'll have those stories and much more after this. Senator Joe Baldacci, hardworking, independent, and effective. Joe Baldacci delivered by helping to pass more than $1 billion in direct tax relief for more than 95% of Maine taxpayers. Joe Baldacci delivered by passing laws to support Maine's small businesses across the board that provided tens of millions in direct relief, helping to protect and save thousands of jobs. Joe Baldacci, hardworking, independent, and effective. Delivering results for Bangor and Her Don't be scared to buy a boat this season at Hamlin's Marine on the Belfast waterfront. Starting October 18th and running through Halloween, this is your ticket to the best boat deals completely scare-free. Featuring all-in-stock boat packages, outboards, boats, and trailers, 15 to 25% off. Spooky good deals. At Hamlin's Marine, we are powered by Yamaha Outboard. And we have more than 20 boat packages on display with easy loader trailers too. Stop into the Belfast waterfront and don't be scared to buy a boat at Hamlin's Marine. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home the Kubota VX Series for zero down, 0% zero APR for 60 months, plus save up to $700. Joe Biden and Janet Mills are working together to crush Maine families with rising costs. Mills and Democrats' radical plan targeting gas and home heating fuel will raise Maine's gas tax by up to 40 cents a gallon. And Mills' new tax on food and household essentials will increase monthly grocery bills by nearly $60. And the Biden Mills crush on Maine families. Stop Janet Mills. The top funder of Maine Families First is Thomas Klingenstein. She's been learning about the founding of our country, about rights and freedoms, freedoms that today are under assault. Politician Bruce Poliquin supported amending the U.S. Constitution to ban abortion. He even voted for a nationwide ban. Poliquin would allow politicians to stand between women and their doctors. He supported allowing states to outlaw abortion even in cases of rape or incest. We can't let Bruce Poliquin back in Congress. DCCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Beale University is offering a degree in an unlikely industry. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more. Starting next spring, Beale University in Bangor will be offering an associate's and bachelor's degree in cannabis studies. Program coordinator Sarah Taylor said it's important that people better understand the industry. There was kind of a need for education for people to be able to work um, in the cannabis industry. Taylor says the program will offer two associate's degrees in business administration and cannabis sciences and a bachelor's degree in medicinal plant sciences. And with the growth the industry has seen, Beale University Director of Career Services Robin Tardiff says the university is capitalizing on the current trends. According to Leafly, um, we actually are seeing roughly 280 new jobs uh, appear each day. Uh, so it's, it really is just, it's a growing industry. Taylor says the programs will focus on all aspects of the cannabis industry. So the business administration program ha is going to have technical information regarding cultivation operations and dispensary operations, as well as tax and legal regulations around cannabis. This program will be taught in an asynchronous format where students can work at their own pace as long as they hit the course's necessary deadlines. Even though similar courses are taught around the United States, Beale University senior admissions representative Amber Gray says nothing compares to Beale's program. 
there really aren't any like us. I mean, a lot of courses are given in different states that are similar, but they don't offer the college degree. They have um, diplomas or certificate programs, but they don't have the actual true college degree after you graduate. Despite there being many stereotypes and stigmas surrounding the cannabis industry, Teradif believes that investing in education will change negative perceptions. You know, a lot of these classes are very science heavily based. You're taking micros and you're taking uh, a lot of science based courses that that aren't easy. We're moving away from the average person who just enjoys to smoke cannabis uh, to turning that into a profession. General manager of Brothers Cannabis on Broadway, Matthew Jellison, says he supports cannabis education. We feel that anything that's going to kind of propel the cannabis industry and remove the stigma, we feel a program like this is only going to enhance that and, and make it even more uniform throughout the state. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Bangor residents may have noticed a new storefront on Main Street. The Salty Brick Market recently opened its doors. They offer groceries, a salad bar, and more. The owner even plans to open a deli beginning next month. People that live down here, they love just being able to walk across the street, or actually there's quite a few apartments right upstairs, so they just walk down the stairs and they can grab, you know, the snacks that they need or milk or eggs. So everyone seems to love that we're here. And according to the Downtown Bangor Partnership, the market has filled a hole in the neighborhood. The grand opening is currently taking place from 4 to 8 p.m. today. It includes beer and wine tastings, food samples, and free whippy pies. So still some time to get down there and check it out. Still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, Holy Family Catholic Church in Old Town puts on a shoe sale to give back to its community. And in sports, Central Girls Soccer is gearing up for playoffs, and one senior is in the midst of a historic season. We'll check in with that after the break. Janet Mills's education department was teaching kindergartners radical transgender policies. Now it's pushing a curriculum telling students they're racist if they use certain terms. All lives matter. Mass incarceration. Calling the police on black people. All racist. Janet Mills closed our schools and our kids fell behind. And now she's pushing her radical education agenda. No more politics in schools. No more Janet Mills. The top funder of the main Republican Party is the Republican Governors Association. Your representative has your back. Who's he kidding? Jared Golden votes with Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden 83% of the time. The result? A war in the middle class. The worst inflation in 40 years. Sky-high energy prices. Drugs pouring over the border. And Jared Golden just voted for 87,000 new IRS agents to hassle the middle class. Jared Golden doesn't have your back. He has theirs. The NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Joe Biden is crushing Maine. And who does Jared Golden support? Golden's backing Biden. Jared Golden said Joe Biden has leadership that the country needs right now. Higher taxes, record inflation, and still. Golden's backing Biden. In D.C., Joe Biden relies on Jared Golden's votes. President Joe Biden, and I'm asking you to vote for Jared Golden. Jared Golden says he's independent, but anytime it matters, Golden's, Golden's backing, backing Biden. Biden. I'm Bruce Poliquin, and I approve this message. Wings for Children and Families is hiring youth and child case managers across Central and Northern Maine for all six of our locations. Wings offers a highly supportive work environment where caring and compassionate individuals can make a difference in the lives of children with special needs. Call today, visit our website, or connect with us on Facebook to learn how you can make a referral for services or join our team, where we are highly committed to bringing hope to those we serve. Wings, ranked one of the best places to work in Maine for the last five years in a row. I'll always be an independent fighter for you. Maybe he used to be. But when it mattered, Jared Golden helped Joe Biden hike taxes by billions on people making as little as 20000 a year and nearly doubled the IRS, targeting middle-class families for more, all while giving new tax breaks to the elite. Jared Golden, he's not our independent fighter anymore. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. The University of Maine Black Bears take on the Monmouth Hawks this Saturday at 1 on your local sports leader, ABC7.
Welcome back in everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Well, the University of Maine just received a huge donation towards their new athletic facilities master plan. Phil and Sue Morse are giving $10 million to the plan. The former Black Bears donation includes naming rights for UMaine's new multi-purpose arena, making Morse Arena the new home for Black Bear basketball. School President Joan Farini Mundy says that Phil and Sue have made a lasting difference on the UMaine student experience and what Maine Athletics offers the community. $13.2 million has now been raised by the UMaine Foundation and they are slowly inching towards that $20 million goal. All right, let's move on to some high school sports now. Have I mentioned that we're coming to crunch time in fall sports? Playoffs are right around the corner. And for Central Girls Soccer, one senior has had a pretty historic season, and they're just looking to keep it rolling into the postseason. They're a great group of girls to have, so it's been a delight to have this team this year. With playoffs right around the corner, the Central Red Devils are gearing up to make a push in Class C North. We're doing good. We're excited. We're ready for it. We're definitely working towards like getting into playoffs and getting prepared. Um, I think we're, a lot of us are excited. They're sitting at 9-3-1 right now, and their offense is scoring just under six goals a game. So what's working for the Devils? Oh, our chemistry is amazing. Like our team gets so along so well. We have like group chats and we just send funny things to each other all the time. Like we hang out all the time and I just love our team so much. And then on the field we're even better than we are off the field. So. We have really good chemistry with each other. Like nothing's wrong with that. We all we bond very well. We like communicate well, I'd say. Leading the way on offense is senior Riley Speed. Just recently, she scored her 100th goal of her career, and a few games later, became the program's all-time leading scorer. That was amazing. Like, that was all I've been dreaming of since I was a little girl, like, just, like, hitting that big record. And um, I know the person who had the previous record. She's, like, a family member of mine. Well, close enough. <laughs> and I've, like, she's, I've always looked up to her. So just to beat her and, like, be the new role model is, like, really cool. But she's not the only one out on the pitch for Central that can take over a game. We've got four girls in double figures right now, so... We're pretty successful that way, getting distributing the ball around so they can't just uh, really key on Riley. But um, the teams that do key on Riley opens up the other girls to score. And her teammates are just happy to have her around. It's amazing. I love playing with Riley. She's one of like the support systems of our team. Mm -hmm. She's definitely like strong with her position, and she always knows where to go. And she's just like she keeps everybody on point. And she's I love having her. Wishing them luck the rest of the way. They have PCHS on Tuesday. That is their final game before playoffs. Let's stay with high school sports now. We have week seven of the sports splits tonight. Kind of impacted by the weather. So if you're playing on grass, chances are you are not playing tonight. A lot of games moved to yesterday. A lot of games moved to Saturday. Anyways, we will have a few games for you tonight, but we will have two special guests on as well to take the place of what we usually have for the show. We'll talk some playoff predictions and more. Only a few weeks left of the sports split, so we're looking forward to getting out there tonight. And if anyone has an extra umbrella, please bring it to Cameron Stadium. That is all we have for sports. Here is your full five-day forecast. Thank you so much. Our main weather today is brought to you by Varney Ford. Varney Ford in Newport gives one full year maintenance on every new and used vehicle they sell. Come visit them and see their huge selection of cars and trucks. The nice car and truck people. And speaking of nice and not so nice outside right now, looking outside, lots of rain showers all the way from up north down south by the coast. Same thing out here in Bangor. Some rain showers have been continuing throughout most of the day. Doesn't look like much is left. Just a little bit more uh, right by Boston. Same thing coming into our state. But look at Wisconsin. Oh, that's blue. That's some snow showers. Thankfully, we are not in Wisconsin and dealing with those that snow, that wintry mess. We have some 60s and some rain showers that will be continuing overnight tonight. And then same thing into the first half of the day tomorrow. And then some peaks of sunshine that continues into Sunday right in time for the weekend with these warm, warm temperatures. But we do have some wind advisories that are in effect until 8 p.m. tonight, which might get extended, and some gale warnings until 10 p.m. tonight as the winds are a little bit on the breezy end, especially by the coast. So like I mentioned, we do have some snow in the upper Midwest as that cold, cold air has come down from Canada. For us, though... 
Oh yeah, look at that, 60s and 70s down the East Coast. So it is nice outside, feels more like beginning of fall. Not, not looking like 30s and 40s, like a wintry mess all the way in the upper Midwest. But 66 today in Bangor, same thing by the coast, even a couple of 60s up north. So it was looking beautiful today with those all temperatures on the milder end are average closer to 59 degrees and that's going to continue to be on the milder end look at next week 61 for monday 62 on tuesday and then slightly cooler wednesday and thursday but still we'll take those mid 50s any day tonight though temperatures will be really mild once again upper 50s as low temperatures Rain will be continuing. That wind will be an issue once again. So hold your hats and hold those umbrellas because we'll definitely need that tonight. And then into the first half of the day tomorrow as those rain showers stick around, then we'll have some peaks of sunshine and temperatures will start to rise into those mid 60s. So it will feel comfortable outside once again. And our extended forecast outlook does show beautiful weather for Sunday. So go out and about, enjoy those warm temperatures with a good amount of sunshine before more chances of showers arrive by Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Alrighty, Conrad, thanks so much. And still more to come after the break, so stay with us. She's been learning about the founding of our country, about rights and freedoms, freedoms that today are under assault. Politician Bruce Poliquin supported amending the U.S. Constitution to ban abortion. He even voted for a nationwide ban. Poliquin would allow politicians to stand between women and their doctors. He supported allowing states to outlaw abortion even in cases of rape or incest. We can't let Bruce Poliquin back in Congress. DCCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. I got your order back this way. Thanks. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? Come on in, sit down. Be your neighbor, your friend, your banker. Scotty and Savings. I'm Jay Pearl from Carroll Harper & Associates, Maine's most experienced Medicare Health Plans agency. Every day we hear how complicated navigating the Medicare maze can be. Let us help. From enrolling in Medicare to finding the right Medicare Health Plan, we are your go-to agency. We represent Martins Point Generations Advantage and other Medicare Health Plans that meet our quality standards. There's no cost or obligation for our services, so call Carroll Harper & Associates today. Do you have leaky pipes? Are you planning a plumbing job? Is your heating system working right? Are you designing a plumbing project? Then contact Harley's Plumbing and Heating Plus. If your toilet will not flush, Harley will be there in a rush. Furnace bit the dust today. Harley crew is on the way. Harley Plumbing, Harley Heating. 990-2200. Call now. Harley! Call or visit online. You work the night shift, take the extra shift, wake up before dawn, and every paycheck you pay into Medicare and Social Security to fund the retirement you deserve. Bruce Poliquin voted to cut Medicare and put Social Security benefits at risk. He even wants to raise the retirement age. Pretty rich coming from a millionaire politician who's never had to pull an extra shift. Moderate PAC is responsible for the content of this ad. I have a great job. I get up early, head on out, and I get to work. I install solar panels. They power our homes and give me a great paycheck. When Paul LePage was governor, he opposed projects like this, putting Maine last for solar jobs in New England. He even said that climate change wasn't a threat to Maine. Look, we need more of these jobs, and that won't happen if we go back to Paul LePage. The top funder of Better Maine is the Democratic Governors Association.
Welcome back. If you're in need of some footwear, you might want to head to church. Holy Family Catholic Church in Old Town, that is. They have they have found a unique way to help their food pantry and the community. They're having a shoe sale after a local footwear distributor contacted them last year and asked them if they wanted shoes, boots, sandals, and other items. And every penny raised will be used to help those in the community. It helps fund the food pantry that we service uh, at least 60 families right now per month. We also have a community luncheon every uh, once a month that we do dinners. Last month was a meatloaf dinner. The month before was a chicken parmesan dinner. The Helps Fund Thanksgiving Baskets and the church's Christmas program. Last year they raised $15,000. They're hoping to top that this year. All shoes are 10 bucks a pair and the sale is taking place again tomorrow from 9 to 2 at the Holy Family Catholic Church Parish Hall on Brunswick Street in Old Town. So a great way to raise some money for their community there. All right, well, that does it for tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a great rest of your evening.